The Gordie Howe International Bridge breaks ground in the U.S. I just love it when he said, I'm really just a lucky old farm boy. I remember when I came up, cut out all the newspapers showing me in a Red Wings uniform just to prove to everyone that I played in the NHL. The Michigan Livestock Expo celebration rewards hardworking youth exhibitors. Hot and dry conditions are impacting the state's soybean crop, and Michigan Agricultural Commodities' Chris Betts is back this week with a look at market activity. I'm Janelle Bros, and this is Farm News 5. Farm News 5 is brought to you by Ford. The 10th Annual Michigan Livestock Expo wrapped up Tuesday in East Lansing with the Celebration Auction. The state's finest youth livestock exhibitors showcased their animals and set a new overall sales record of just over $261,000. Of the early sales total, about $100,000 went towards scholarships for the youth exhibitors. So across the state of Michigan, we had uh, 535 exhibitors at the 10th anniversary of the Michigan Livestock Expo, all of which those kids brought uh, four different species and over 1,200 head to the 10th anniversary uh, event this year. <laughs> Meyer was again the top buyer purchasing the grand champion market beef steer, shown by Emma Knoll of Croswell. Other major supporters included Greenstone Farm Credit Services, Crystal Flash, and Foster Swift. For more information about the Michigan Livestock Expo and for complete show results, visit milivestock.com. Over 100 Farm Bureau members came out to the second annual Dinner on the Farm, hosted for 4th District Congressman John Molinar at Pash Farms, a fourth generation dairy operation in Isabella County's Beale City. Representative Molinar discussed immigration and border security, trade, and the Farm Bill. The Farm Bill is now in conference committee where lawmakers from the United States House and Senate will work on a compromise. There are some differences. Uh, the main focus uh, difference is on work requirements for uh, SNAP benefits. And uh, I support the work requirements. I think it's important when we have a growing economy, uh, you know, under 5% unemployment in Michigan, we need all hands on deck and people in the workforce. But at the end of the day, that'll be negotiated out and I don't think anything will stand in the way of getting some certainty for, for our farmers. You know, our goal is obviously to have it in, in effect uh, by the end of September. Um, at the, in the past, there have been extensions, but we'd really like to get this done. And I know uh, leaders in the House and in the Senate want to work together to get something done. Meanwhile, with 2018 being an election year, it's uncertain if Congress can pass an immigration bill. You know, it is a complicated issue. You know, right now, you know, you have one side that doesn't want to support funding for a border wall. I tend to believe that Border security is important, uh, as is the need for guest workers and making sure we have the workforce we need. And so hopefully we'll be able to come together with some kind of an agreement um, because I think it would be timely and really uh, add to our U.S. economy and, and the confidence people have here in, in Congress. The Michigan Soybean Promotion Committee is devoted to investing soybean farmer checkoff dollars to address grower concerns. We focus our efforts on production research, market development, and outreach. Learn more at michigansoybean.org. The recent hot and dry weather spell has been a blessing or a curse for Michigan soybean farmers, depending on what part of the state they're in and when they planted. There's some growers that are thankful for the hot and dry at this time, and those areas especially are those areas that are prone to white mold infection. White mold is an issue, especially when we have cool and wet conditions. And obviously we know in the last three weeks to a month, we've had just the opposite. So those fields that have a lot of growth and a history of white mold are benefiting from these hot and dry conditions that should reduce or maybe even in some cases eliminate the white mold concern this year. There are some areas of this state that are very dry, that have had some wet conditions earlier in the spring. In some cases were late planted and maybe in conditions that they weren't so excited about but needed to get the job done because it was getting late. And now those fields have a little bit of growth and now it's turned dry. So in those cases, we've got some fields with small soybeans that are struggling to, to get much growth put on them and to really reach for high yields. Don't rely on a handshake. Minimize your risk. 
protect your relationships. Get it in writing. The busiest trade corridor between Canada and the United States will soon have an additional route. State and international leaders broke ground on the Gordie Howe International Bridge from Detroit to Windsor, Ontario, July 17th. This is more than jobs. This is more than security. This is about friendship. This is about neighbors. This is about being one together and finding ways to grow together. One of the exciting things as they go through this, they talk about this being a 125-year span. That's how we should look at our relationship. The bridge is going to allow us a safer route, uh, more commerce going to and from, and allow people more access. And once again, it speaks volumes about the fact that it's a Gordie Howe bridge, being growing up a farmer on a farm, you know, farm country, that we produce, you know, we promote agriculture and produce products that not only for Canada and America, but globally. And I think that's why this bridge is so important. To Michigan Farm Bureau President Carl Bednarski says the new infrastructure will increase opportunities for farmers and rural communities across Michigan. With a look at the latest market activity, here is Michigan Ag Commodities Chris Betts. Thanks, Janelle. All three have made recoveries this week. Lows off the implementation of tariffs by the U.S. and China seem to have been set in at this point. Attention for corn and beans has turned more domestic on dry and hot weather over the first half of July. Forecasts have turned cooler with rain for the second half, which will help alleviate stress. Still, look for a more sideways to recovering pattern for corn and beans. Wheat is finding support from disappointing yield reports as harvest progresses in the EU and Russia. U.S. export wheat is still not competitive, but the prospects are improving as foreign value should continue to firm. Michigan wheat harvest is entering its home stretch as farmers rush to get it off ahead of this weekend's rain. Mill and elevator cash bids have firmed considerably. Vomitoxin has been an issue in areas. Be mindful of discounts and possible rejections, and talk to your local merchant to find the best option for your wheat. For more market information, go to michiag.com. With Michigan Agricultural Commodities, I'm Chris Betts. For more news and video, visit michiganfarmnews.com and the Michigan Farm Bureau channel on YouTube. With Farm News 5, I'm Janelle Bros. Have a great week of farming.